All right, here we go with the last of the four graphs on the motion graphs practice. All right, this is another one that's been started for us and we're gonna try to finish it up uh, with, with the details we've been given. Now, this comes from uh, one of my favorite cartoons growing up, Scooby-Doo. Some of you have probably seen it. My daughters recently saw it and they really enjoyed the door chase scheme scenes, you know, where they run in, a, they're in a hallway with a whole bunch of doors and they're running away from a bad guy and they run in one door and then appear in a different door and this kind of goes on and on and on until the next scene change. And, and one of those is kind of described here. All right, so in this scene, there are four doors. The first door is at zero meters. So here's door number one at zero. And then the second door is at four meters. So one, two, three, four. Here's door number two. And then five, six, seven, eight. There's door number three. 9, 10, 11, 12, and there is door number 4 at 12. All right, so uh, it does say the graph has x-axis time is 2 seconds. Okay, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. I'm going to label it just because it's easier later to understand what's going on if we've labeled everything properly, 24, 26, 28. So that's time in seconds. Okay, this over here was uh, position in meters. All right, and uh, it gives us kind of the starting bit, right? It says, uh, it does say assume that as soon as the characters get to a door, they enter and are at that position until they emerge from another door. All right, so here's what the beginning goes like. Scooby-Doo starts near the first door, so he starts here at zero, and in two seconds runs to and enters the second door. So two seconds, runs to the second door and enters. Now he stays in there until he appears at another door. That's what it's set up here. They enter and are at that position until they emerge from another door. So two seconds later, he emerges from door four. So that's what happens here. That's two seconds later. And now he's at door four and runs to door three in two seconds. So he runs down to door three, which is at eight. And that takes two seconds from four to six. And then it says he emerges from the next door three seconds later. So one, two, three, there's three seconds. Now uh, the next door is gonna happen down here. So. At nine seconds, Scooby-Doo exits door one again and runs back to door three. So nine seconds, so he's gonna exit door one. It says it's gonna take him five seconds to get back to door three. So one, two, three, four, five, and he's gotta be back up to door three. So I gotta, something like this. All right, running back up to door three there. Okay, two seconds later, so he's there for two seconds. He emerges from door two. All right, so he's gonna come out of door two here. Runs toward door one at a speed of two meters per second, but halfway there, sees a monster and turns around at the same speed and returns to door two. So he's going to run towards door one at two meters a second. So from four to two in one second, halfway to door one, he sees a monster and turns around and goes back inside door two. Immediately, immediately he emerges from door three and freezes for three seconds. So he comes out of three and he's there for one, two, three seconds as he decides where to go and runs to door four at a speed of four meters per second. So that means he's gonna get there right there in one second he's going four meters two seconds later so he stays here for two seconds remember he stays in that door until he emerges he emerges from door number one and spends the remaining time running at a speed of three meters a second towards back towards door four so three meters a second so that means you need to go three six nine and look at that 12 he ends up right back at door four when the scene ends so that should be a nice straight graph there 
All right. Perfect. And that's what the graph looks like. That's him running in one door and coming out the other door. And there aren't any other questions for this one. So that's actually all we had to do was to read and interpret and draw it on the position versus time graph. Okay, and that was the whole point of all of these activities was just to get comfortable with position versus time graphs. No matter how complicated or how weird they may look, we want to be able to draw it and interpret it. You should be able to tell where he is at any position now. You should be able to tell how fast he's moving, right? All of that information you could now get from this graph. You could get the total distance he traveled, right? All of those different things you can now get from this graph. All right, that's it.